G'day folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show, once again with myself and Lauren. Uh, if you haven't already done so for the camping show, if you haven't watched us before, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can watch us or you can listen in if you don't want to watch us uh, at your favourite podcast app, wherever you tune in and you can join in on the conversation at the Snowy's uh, Camping Show Facebook group. And you might want to jump in on the conversation today because we're quite excited today. We've got uh, another great Australian manufacturer with us from Superpeg, and we have Isaac on the line. How are you, Isaac? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Thanks for coming. So we've recently done a couple of episodes, I think um, 55, we episode 55 was talking 10 pegs. And I think the whole time I just was like, super peg, super peg, he had pegs, super peg pegs. (laughs) But we had to alliterate, like just just confirm that we're not actually – there's, there's no paid. Yeah, super peg aren't <laughs> giving me a dollar for every time <laughs> I mention key head pegs. We just reckon it's great. They're great pegs. So, yeah, yeah, we did mention super peg a lot in that. And that maybe that's what spurred us to think, well, maybe we should actually speak to super peg. Yeah, for sure. And I think also um, we did that shelt, shelt, rainy shelter day thing, episode oh, yeah. 59 or whatever. We talked about tarps tarp shelters and super peg um, and super peg and tarp kits and whatever. So, peg pegs, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a natural progression to have you guys on. So, it's awesome. Yeah, so what, no, what's um, me happy to be here? <laughs> <laughs> we got lots of questions for you, but f- before we do that, let's uh, give you a chance to tell us about yourself. What, what's your position with Superpeg? How long you been there, um, and uh, and what do you do? Yeah, so I'm the sales manager here. Um, I've actually been here about five years now. So I started out in the metalwork, making all the awnings, um, you know, making poles, and just yeah, worked my way up to sales. Right. Um, but yeah, so I. I Funnily enough, I know a fair bit about um, each little department because I've yeah chipped away at a few areas. So yeah, that's that's awesome. So you literally started as hands on, and yeah, that's so you must have obviously as well in the last couple of years, um, yeah, just really been able to observe and be privy to a lot of like progression and stuff with Australian manufacturing and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, starting out in the factory, um, yeah, basically on the awnings side of things, making poles, you know, packing pegs and you name it, I've, I've probably done it. <laughs> did you have any, personally yourself, did you have any skills, metalwork skills and things like that, or did you get all your training on the job? On the job? Yeah, I right. rocked up, yeah, in a, yeah, pretty fresh um, and yeah, just wanted to just, yeah, basically learn some skills and become a little bit handier. Um, so I can be a bit handier at home, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So you're off the tools altogether now? Yeah, I've got office hands now. So, <laughs> yeah. The, the cuts and yeah. <laughs> so um, we also, uh, just before we get into more of the Super Peg story, we've got a couple of uh, new gear landing. People ask yeah. us all the time, oh, new gear, like what great stuff have you got? And um, So this, this is like June June. 2022, we, we just yeah, had some 2022. awesome new Super Peg products hit the so, website. Yeah, we've got the Super Cube Fire Pit, which um, I've got a product review on that, or I do technically by the time this goes live, we'll also have a product review of that up, which I'm really excited about. And also the Outbound Shield Awning. Now, you guys have had this out for a little while, haven't you? Yeah, so we've had it out since about November, um, and so we just wanted to see what it could do over this over the summertime, um, and just yeah, we were so excited to have it. But yeah, you guys have just um, taken it on board as well, which we're yeah really excited to see how how well it can go. Yeah, us too, because we haven't ever had a freestanding awning no. in our range before, so this will be our first freestanding awning, which is pretty awesome. So yeah. I'd, I'd say watch this space for a bit more info on that. So you've tested it really extensively yeah. then. I always think of a big awning like that as being quite an umbrella, but you've obviously built a lot of strength. Well, it seems like the few videos I've watched, you've added sort of flexibility and stuff in it to comp- allow for that sort of movement. Absolutely, yeah. It's got that 17 metres squared um, coverage. So what that is, that's – as essentially a big sail. So what mm. we've got to prepare for is, you, you know, occasional wind gusts. So what you'll see is the awning will slightly flex with the wind instead of being that stagnant and, um, yeah, taking all the pressure on the hinges. We've allowed for a bit of flex just so it can go with the with the wind. Yeah, nice. Do you know how many um, or, like, what the wind rating on it is? Because I'm imagining a, that's the first question a lot of people are going to ask is how freestanding is it really? Yeah. yeah, so we've had it up on the beach at Bribey, um, which is, yeah, a local beach up yeah. here. And, yeah, it was absolutely hammering along. And I think, yeah, it was got to about 30 knots, no issue at all. So, okay. um, yeah, all right. it's really, really strong, those, that one. That's really good to know. 
because I think I potentially have my eye on personally. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, righto. The fire pit looks cool. I haven't had a play with that yet, but I know they they got another flat pack fire pit, which is the yeah. Frontier, which was um which is a pretty cool fire pit. Um, but the cube looks looks pretty awesome. I'm excited for the the grill and hot plate and stuff and how it all fits together. It just oh, yeah. looks really schmick. Has that <laughs> that one's been has that one been around for a while or is that a new for yes, this winter? That one I think was about a June July release last year as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, I personally own the cube and I've got the grill. So yep. it's beautiful, you know, cooking up some eggs as well as whatever you want to cook on the other side in the actual grill section. It's yeah, yeah it's, it's nice and easy to go together. It's yeah, it's it's one of my favorites. Brilliant. So we were just talking briefly before the show um, about what we thought was a, a rebranding that happened just recently, but you were saying you, you've made this rebrand happen a while ago. So it's probably a good segue into just giving us a little bit of the the history of, of Superpeg, when it started and and where how you've ended up where you are now. Yeah, so we started out in 1974. Um, we were just a small family-run business, um, but, you know, we always had the ethos of the yeah, high-quality products made for the Australian conditions. Um, and basically we've just expanded and grown from there um, into the super peg, you know, today. So, Is the original family still involved? No. So they sold the business in 2020. Um, okay. Yeah, now we've got some yeah, new owners. Wicked. So I'm assuming being called super peg, yeah, the OG product line would have been pegs, right? Or is that just correct? Yeah, oh, so, yeah, sweet. Yeah, we had the like the key head pegs, which you guys have spoken about. That was probably yeah, our first um, dip at it. But yeah, you know, way back in the day, we used to have our own swags and you know, cargo carriers for cars and yeah, right. all these little yeah, weird and wonderful things with a few basic awnings. Um, and now we've just yeah, streamlined it to um, yeah, some awnings, poles, and pegs, and um, yeah, some little knickknacks as well. Yeah, right. So in terms of Australian manufacturing, majority of your range is actually manufactured in Queensland. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, correct. In the factory in Yatla. Um, mm-hmm. So we've got yeah, moulding machines that do all our plastic pegs, all the canvas we get from uh, wax converters. But we yeah get that into our factory in it's all made here, sewn here, cut here, and, yeah, all fitted up. So with the um, – with the sort of materials and sourcing things like wax, wax con, do your canvas. What about your um, metal supply and how has that been affected over the last couple of years? Because I do know some other Australian made brands have had to really sort of pull back on, on what they're able to produce because of short supplies with stuff coming from overseas and, and that sort of stuff. How have you guys found that? Yeah, the last two years have been quite challenging. Um, you know, our normal lead times of, all right, we can get this canvas in, in six weeks, sometimes will be eight weeks or longer. And so we really had to prepare for those longer lead times. Um, so what we did at the start was let's just get as much as of it as we can. So if there is a longer lead time, we're a little bit better prepared for it. Yep. And raw materials from like your steel and your aluminium and that sort of stuff, is that all Australian-based raw materials? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we get our aluminium extrusion from Abra Aluminium. So um, those guys, yeah, nice and local as well. Um, But yeah, we get um, all the exclusives extrusions into us, which you see on our awnings. So yeah, awesome. And wax wax con or wax converters, that's an Australian uh, canvas manufacturer. Yeah, they make dry's bone and um, all that stuff as well. Yeah. I think. So so is there, so is it safe to say that you get as much as you can from Australian? Does yes. manufacture Australian supplies, and is there sort of a? There's always a, there's always seems to be a percentage that companies have to go to overseas because we simply just don't make it here in Australia. But um, how much of it do you need to go overseas to get? So it's only a very small amount that we get from overseas, and with all the lead times and the issues going on overseas, we've really had a focus on trying to pretty much get everything Australian made. So yeah. I know that's yeah the the vision that we've got going forward just to not have to rely on um, overseas, basically. Yeah, okay. So give us a bit more information about sort of like your workshop and your crew and and things like that. Do you have more than one location or is it all just – do you have one manufacturing plant? How many crew do do you have working for you and things like that? So we're all we're based in Yatla. We do have another storage shed about ten minutes away over okay. in another suburb, um, but that's purely just storage. So it's all um, in three sheds in Yatla, um, and yeah, we've probably got a, around a team around thirty uh, working for us at the moment. So okay. yeah, it's a good little good little crew that we've got. 
And Yatla is um, south of Brizzy, is that right? Correct, yeah, so halfway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Okay. Awesome. Is there anything that uh, – is, is, is everything manufactured to a degree in Australia? When you say there's a small percentage that's made overseas, is, is do you still – I'm not quite sure what I'm getting at here, but is there anything that you do? Is just it, have to, do, you, do you mean like componentry, yeah, as yeah. raw materials? That's right, yeah, yeah I, that I know sort of like stuff. there's Australian made 12 volt ovens, but they can't get a thermostat here, for example. Yeah, and like GME and, is 100% Australian assembled, but they do have to get some componentry from yeah, overseas yeah. and, and things. I think I asked because a lot of customers sort of go, oh, is it, is it really Australian or do you just sort of buy from overseas and assemble it here? But uh, my understanding is with Superpeg, a majority of it is made and assembled here in Australia. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So um, we do get some items like I know our key head pegs we do get from overseas, but just recently we're looking to get them Australian made as well. So um, just purely that push of, um, yeah, you know, a bit of patriotism and bringing it back to Australia. Yeah, Yeah, trying to revamp, I think, a lot of things that potentially have been lost over the last couple of decades. Yeah, it's funny that it had to take COVID to make that us focus back on on the importance of doing yeah. it in our own backyard. So it's yeah, great that exactly. you're doing that. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of your range, I know that personally sort of until I started working at Snowy's, I just attributed super pegs to like pegs and poles and pole fittings and that's about it. But you guys do a lot more than that. Yeah, so we now have the outbound range, and that's probably why we brought on that name outbound is because people just thought we did pegs, basically. But, mm-hmm. yeah, we've got a whole factory dedicated to our four-wheel drive awnings. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and we've got a, a huge amount of models in there as well to suit every um, every camper. Yeah, awesome. And do you do any other sort of camping gear as well? Um, it is mainly just, yeah, four-wheel drive awnings, our poles, pegs, um, and just, you know, we've got like the crock bin and things like that that you guys um, take from us. Already. Oh, yeah, crock bin's pretty good. So you've got a brand called Super RV, which is your online outlet. Now, I know I, I'd love for Snowy's to carry all the, the Super Peg range because there's all sorts of fancy fittings and everything in there, not necessarily sold it's sort in of quantity. like a candy store for it a camper yeah, because yeah, you, you can there, just lots of take a and basket and just take a handful yeah. of these and a handful of these, a couple of those. Or like the Lego wall at the Lego shop <laughs> yeah. at the back where you just go and pick the bits you want, but we totally. can't keep it all. But um, Because you do have all, all ends of fittings for ends of poles, middles of poles and, and all sorts of pegs and strange, unique things. And But you've got the Super RV, which is your direct-to-customer outlet online, isn't it? So if we if we don't have it or if a customer just wants to browse the entire Super Peg range and buy, they can do that through your website. Yeah, exactly. So they can jump on there. We've yeah, pretty much got everything on there. Um, so, yeah, they can peruse and, yeah, come up with any weird and wonderful ideas and, yeah, we can help out in that area. You've got a few kits as well, like a tarp kit. Do you, do you still do the tarp kits? What we're finding is so we still do the tarp kits um, and, yeah, people often go, I've got this size tarp, what's going to suit? Um, and, yeah, we can direct them towards this tarp kit that's going to give them the pegs, ropes, poles, yep. spreaders, everything they need to, um, yeah, it's a good little beginner's kit basically. Okay. I think we mentioned that in a previous episode. Yeah. But then we also said you don't have to have everything. You can just buy two poles and a ridge pole and a tarp and, and go from there. So, mm-hmm. But you guys put, put, I guess, the most common – uh, sizes together in a handy all-in-one kit. So, so in yeah. in terms of poles, I guess probably one of the largest questions that we get is aluminium versus galv poles, and how yeah. do you sort of pick the right pole for the job? What's your thoughts on that one? See, I like galv. It's got the nice price point as well, mm. but aluminium it's lighter, easy to use. I find so it really. Like if weight's an issue when you're travelling, then aluminium's got to be the way you go. It's just, yeah, saves so much in weight. And the, the twist lock is on the aluminium, but it's not on the galve poles. Is that because the galve poles are sort of too heavy for that twist lock mechanism to function? It'd, it'd slip inside um, with the gal. So with the aluminium, it's got that nice grip and can support heaps of weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, with the gal, I think it would just, yeah, unfortunately slip just due to the material being a bit slipperier. Okay. How do you judge the strength between the two? Then, I, I, if um, if someone's saying they just want the strongest pole, they'll get steel. But how much stronger is the steel pole? I know that's that you can't really come up with a, a single number for that. But how much stronger would the steel pole be 
over an aluminium pole? See, if it's an upright pole, I actually prefer the aluminium twist lock. Um, like that can support my weight easily. Um, and yeah, with your ridge rails, that's where you might start to go walk towards the gal, but you can interchange as well with both of them. Um, so gal's probably, yeah, that nicer, longer span, it's got its strength. But if it's an upright pole, I'd be going, yeah, aluminium. Yeah, so, right. it's more, so it's more that sideways um, sort of flex that you're saying that is stronger with a steel pole over aluminium. So if it's directly down and you've got a guy who's pulling the force down, then, yeah, go with alloy because it's always oh, alloy, aluminium. Oh, aluminium, alloy. yeah. Aluminium, it's aluminium nice or alloy? This is something I always get – I hadn't planned on this question, but aluminium or alloy. Is it aluminium or is it alloy that you use? And is – I mean, coming from someone in manufacturing, can you highlight the, the differences for those who really don't understand? Um, so we use, yeah, aluminium, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I'm not too cleared up on the differences, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, sorry, I put you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah. right, my, my research is that an alloy is a mix of materials, so it will, yeah. have, it, it will have aluminium and steel or something mixed something, in, yeah. in with it, and there's a lot of different alloys, whereas aluminium is just pure, I don't know what the scientific element is for it, but it's just aluminium in the, in the material. With the aluminium, um, like your Bigfoot, poles, for example, they've got those tiny little lines in them. Is that mm. to help keep the pole strong? So it's actually for grip. So okay. normally when you're doing a twist lock, um, yeah, it's just to help out in that grip area. Yeah, right. That's pretty good. So what that, that makes it look cool. It does make it look what, cool. What is it that makes the super peg poles better than, say, something that's, I don't know, third, third or two-thirds the price? See, it, it purely just comes down to strength for us. Um, it's, yeah, as I said earlier, that cam lock is just ridiculously strong. So, um, yeah, you can tighten it up. It's not going to slip or anything like that. And ease of use, um, that's, yeah, why they, they're proving just so popular. The um, A question we get often is the aluminium poles, can you – still pull the inserts out and interchange the inserts because it looks like, especially if you get, say, the Bigfoot tent pole, looks like the spigot is actually pressed in there. Is it – if you're wanting – if you're someone who's wanting to sort of potentially customise your pole set up a bit, a bit better and maybe change your inserts and, and do that over time, would galve poles be the better option? <laughs> See, both of them, like gal poles, it would be easier to custom make. Um, but with aluminium, what we often suggest is just under that press line, you can chop it off and you're only going to okay. lose a little bit of the pole. In yeah, that like process. probably like half a centimetre or something like okay. that. Yeah, exactly. I thought of that. And chop it off just with a hacksaw. Exactly. Yeah, nice yeah. and easy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what, I love the look on your face and you were like chop it off with the, uh, like a Well, hacksaw, I was thinking about what like, else you'd say. <laughs> like you could probably say angle grinder, but then I think if you use an angle grinder, especially on steel, you end up with like rust issues and that sort of stuff because of the heat. So yeah. I think, I don't Just know, I was hacksaw. thinking out loud. Um, another That's question <laughs> on the little plastic components because I reckon a lot of poles, um, basic poles that I've had, what ends up failing is like the little plastic sleeve that fits over the join or or um, cracks appear in the foot on the bottom. Um, but your plastic components are made with a like a nylon. Like is, is are nylons nylons? Is is your is the quality of the quality of the material you use for all of those spigot components that are plastic of, yeah, so of high quality? We do have a special recipe that we use. Um, so it's nylon and a bit of glass filled as well. So it's, it should be yeah, nice and strong, but still able to take the elements. Okay. And I'm assuming they're all like a singular mold as well. So those in, in, in like your, your spreader insert, for example, or, you know, your C clip ends or whatever, they're just a singular piece from a single mold. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we've got yeah that many molds. So you can do your C clips, you can do your spigots, you can do your U clips. There's yeah, we've got that many uh, dies out there. Sorry for the plastic injection machines. What's the advantage of C clips over the um, the flat tab ends with the holes in them, the spigot holes? See, it depends, like those ones with the holes in it, they're really good to go over the top of a spigot, um, whereas C-clips, they're normally going on the side of the tube as well. So okay. it just comes down to, yeah, the application. It Would it be strong, like in an instance where you had the choice of of um, where you're putting your spreader pole, I'm assuming trying to put them over your spigot, side to sides on your spigot is probably better than a, a C-clip? That's correct, yeah, because it's keeping all the pressure on that upright pole mm -hmm. um, and it's locked on with the spigot. So, yeah, it's 100% the best yeah, best option if you can. 
Can I just pull up on something you mentioned before where you said glass field, which is to many who don't know, kind of find that a weird concept. There's, I mean, there's nylon cups that are glass filled, but that is like a fiberglass. I, I don't know the technicals of it, but my understanding is it's like a fiberglass fiber that's within the nylon. Can you explain that rather than me yeah, trying to correct. explain yeah, something so, that you're here to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it is basically just a, a percentage of the nylon. We use a glass filament in there. And what that does is, yeah, just gives it that rigidity. Um, so, yeah, it keeps its shape, keeps its form, but, yeah, still nice and strong. With your um, – because probably another really common question that we get, especially for things like tarp shelters and, and things like that um, – Spreader bars and, and spreader poles, I mean, most of the ones that we carry in the range probably max out at like three 310, I reckon. Longest spreaders. Like in terms yeah. of the longest spreaders. Yeah. But you do have some options that extend even further than that, don't you? Um, yeah, cr- correct. Yeah. So we've got like galvanised ridge rails. So that's the square tubing and they can go across, um, you know, up to like 24 footers and ones like that. So that's for your big tarp setups. That's what you'd absolutely want. And with those, you would need to have a supporting um, upright. Correct. If you can, what you want is anything over 12 foot, you want to have that support in there. Just just because there's so much pressure from the canvas on that um, boat, you just want to give it a little bit of support where you can. Okay. So sort of roughly every 12 feet, you'd want to have a supporting upright. Yeah. 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 For, for a square pole. Uh, so I'm assuming you're, what, what you're saying there, that a square ridge pole is stronger than a round ridge pole? Correct, yeah. Over those spans, that's when, yeah, you'd want to be going that uh, square tubing. Okay. What about a round one? How how often would you recommend supports for a round ridge pole? See, we've got the round um, spreaders, but we I think the max we do up is around that three-metre mark. Yep. Um, so that's, yeah, where we basically – any of that's our limit. Anything beyond that, that's when we'd recommend, yeah, that square. Okay, okay cool. That's a good guide, I reckon. Yep. And with your uh, – with, like, tarp, when you're putting up tarp shelters and, and stuff like that, you when would you need to consider having a spreader bar, do you think? Is it just if you want to make peaks or what are your thoughts? It's when you're setting up the tarp, what I traditionally did was go every second islet around the tarp um, and then, yeah, try and have a peak just so if it rains or there's, yeah, any heavy moisture, it's going to run off efficiently and, yeah, you're not going to, it's not going to belly out and ruin your, your setup basically. All right. So every second islet you would recommend having an upright awning pole and would you get away with just one spreader? Really depends on the size, um, but yeah, having that peak to two taller poles. So normally I go seven footers, then two nine footers, and then a ridge rail across there. Okay. Um, so it really depends on the size, but some people yet yeah, might have two or three spreaders across it, and just to yet yeah, really bunker it down. Okay, cool. So if you if you have a basic what what's what would be a standard tarp size? What would be a standard tarp size? Do you reckon the most popular think, tarp size? But- yeah. yeah, like 12 by 24 is probably our most um, common one that we see. And okay. that's, you're talking feet, right? So that's, Correct. what's yeah. that? Three. Oh, math. About, about three feet to a meter. Four, is that four by, four by six, maybe? Meters? Um, yeah, about that. I'm not, yep. ma- I'm not a math person. Roughly. So anyway. for, for if, if you're that basic sort of most common tarp size, if someone's wanting to get their tarp shell to set up, from that perspective, how roughly how many poles do you reckon they'd need? Um, so depending on which brand you go, but every second, yeah, every second islet um, needs an upright. Mm-hmm. I normally go, yeah, the bulk of it's seven footers, two nine footers, and then uh, spread it across that 12 foot section. Okay. Just so you can have that, yeah, nice peak in the middle to give you a bit of height as well as that runoff. Yeah. And you'd probably want to have two guy ropes off every awning pole. Yeah. Upright. So you've got the corner guy ropes, so those guys go on there, and then each other pole you'd want at least, yeah, a single guy rope off that. Okay. And what about we're, we're a fan of trace, spring, trace springs. We've I talked love about them before trace springs. for certain applications, in especially uh, tarps where you need a bit of movement, but what's your take on we, – we've always said a trace spring is great, great for, um, to allow for movement in the wind so that the, the trace springs take up the stress rather than the fabric, but what, what's your take on or your sales pitch on a trace string? 
Trace Spring. Yeah, absolutely. Struggling with my words there. <laughs> <laughs> no, Trace Spring, I absolutely love him because, yeah, it takes the pressure off the fabric as well as the peg from ripping out. So it just gives you that little bit of flexibility. If there's, you know, sudden gust, it's going to absorb that rather than trying to rip out, yeah, your, either your eyelet or the peg out of the ground. Cool. Okay. So we flogged poles, but we haven't talked much about pegs, and I've got a few I want, other questions. Well, I want to know what's the difference between polypro and polyethylene because yeah. people ask all the time, black or yellow, and more often than not, I'm like, so no po- idea. Yeah. Po- so it's a poly- <laughs> polycarbonate and a polypropylene, I think. The, so that's yeah, the, 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 the yellow and the black. Let the man pegs. speak, Ben. I think you said polyethylene. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that's the right one. I might be wrong now. Anyway, no, you, you're bit. spot on. So it's the black one, which is polypropylene. And then yellow is polycarbonate. So what we find, <laughs> got up. Um, so what we find is the polycarbonate, the yellow ones, they're a hell of a lot stronger. So those guys, you know, you can go through roots, rocks, and hammer them in, um, and they're not, not going to have any issue with the black polypropylene ones. Those guys we sell heaps and heaps of, but they're really good in those big ones to hammer down into the sand or whatever you're in. They're just not as strong as the polycarbonate yellow ones. Okay. I've always said the polycarbonate was more brittle, but perhaps it is, but it takes a long time to get to the point of it being brittle. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so that's where brittle comes into it, but it's just so strong. So, yeah, we've got videos of it, you know, hammering through plywood and, yeah, whatever we can get our hands on basically. Okay. Yeah, right. It's good to know. Okay. And so there wouldn't be any difference in terms of if you're going to the beach and you know you're going to have wind because I know I thought once we had a conversation and you were like, oh, maybe the black ones are a bit more flexible and the yellow ones are just really strong and potentially more brittle. Like if, you, if you're if you going to have a real windy setup at the beach, would the black ones be better? Do they have a bit more flex in them or is that just a myth? See, there's there's flex in them. But I would just be going with our like screw pegs. So we've got screw like 500 millimeter long screw pegs that's designed to get into the real firmer sand. Okay. So when we were on the beach with all our awnings, we bunker down with those guys, and uh, yeah, they've proved exceptionally strong. Are they the like? They're the massive, massive ones, and they've got a hook on the top, and then that huge. Oh yeah, that one right there. there yep. Yeah, that one right there. Yeah, yeah. We got. So a- that's what we use. Yeah, if we're on the beach. <laughs> and am I? I'm right in thinking they're in your. Um, your like wild weather kit for the outbound awning as well. Is that right? Yeah, correct. So they come with the screw pegs as well. Um, but yeah, so the awnings, they all come with all the pegs and uh, ropes, everything you need for it to be operational. But if you're going on the beach, that's when you may want to look to upgrade your pegs just to something a bit longer so you can really get into that firm sand. Okay. Uh, on those screw pegs, they, they, we've always said using a peg, you put it in perpendicular to the fly, right? So the, the guy rat comes down and, and the peg goes perpendicular to the fly. But those screw ones, you're putting, you put them in in line with the guy rat. No, no, sorry, I said fly. But what are you guy, saying? Yeah. Do you want me to start again? Yes. I'll start again. Okay. <laughs> so Why don't we just rat. say, hey, Isaac, how do you put screw pegs into the ground? Yeah. Ellie. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so the beauty of these guys is they do get into the nice deep sand, but what you want to do is actually have them straight down so then the pressure is on the stem going upwards as opposed okay. to on an angle and putting pressure that way. Right. Okay. So is that just for those particular ones or is that for all screw pegs? Um, so that's what we find, yeah, for screw pegs works best. Okay. It was like your key heads, like these guys here that we have. Yeah. Um, that's where you can put them in on an angle and they can pressure upwards and that's fine. Okay. Screw pegs straight down. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. Much, much, I got more, you. much, more, con- <laughs> much more concise. He's Thank got, you. He's got you back then. <laughs> uh. um, other pegs, I think you've got a fancy uh, little orange one that, that – is designed with more pressure, it pulls into the ground. I can't think what it's called. Oh, ground, ground anchor, anchor or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him, yeah. So that one is really cool as well. So it goes on the angle, but when you're hammering it in and it's got pressure on it, it actually digs in further. So it's, yeah, very, very strong design peg. And what would you use those for? That's probably, the, they're not the biggest ones. So I'd probably use them even in yeah, your soil or even yeah, fair, firm ground. They're quite good for. Okay. okay. And just for normal sort of tents and things, or would you put them for awnings or stuff that is going to take a bit more wind load? 
Um, so, yeah, you could use them if there's going to be a bit more wind load, as long as it comes down to what kind of ground you're on. If you're on that firm kind of soil, then they're perfect. And are those pegs ultimately sort of the function of those pegs void if you put a tray spring in as well? No, so trace springs will still work. It, okay. it works the same again as like your tarp setup. It's just going to take that pressure off the peg, off the unit, um, and, yeah, just do it on that trace spring, which has a bit of give. Mm. Do you have a testing method? All these all these questions are just coming into our head yeah. as we're going here. Do you have a testing method for pegs? Do you have like a like a, a benchmark that you, you try to work to? to like blow them up of, in the back car park for quality yeah. control? Yeah. <laughs> We've actually, yeah, we, we've got a gauge on our forklift. So we hammer it into the ground. We've got a little gauge and we can test how much pressure um, a certain peg has before it gives up. So I'm not too sure on the specifics um, because we haven't done it that recently. Um, but, yeah, we've definitely tested them and, yeah, put them to put them to use. That's yeah, pretty right. cool. That's awesome. I guess it would be hard to share that information because it would vary so much depending on the ground that the peg's in. Exactly. But yeah. yeah, that's cool to know you've got a, a benchmark for how you test it. What is your quality <laughs> control process? Because I think um, when it comes to sort of brands that manufacture overseas and brands that manufacture in Australia and things like that, there is uh, a perception around quality control lacking in sort of internationally manufactured gear. What's your, yeah, what is Superpex quality control process? So we've always, so there's different areas, like in the awnings, we've always got guys doing fit up, then doing a QA to just make sure everything's um, perfect. Mm -hmm. In the plastics, we've got the recipe. So, um, you know, we get the first batch out, give it a test, make sure it's all um, all up and above board as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we're always testing our products just before they go out just to yeah, make sure they're up to the standard. Yeah, cool. I've never put plastic and recipe in the same sentence. Me either. I don't think so. That sounds, that <laughs> actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> so how many ingredients go into a plastic? Or is that, exactly, secret, yeah. is that secret information? No, it's a secret. It's like, it's, <laughs> Super secret. It's, it's the five spices and whatever. I don't know. I was yeah. just going to try and throw a KFC reference in there and realise <laughs> halfway through that I had no idea what the actual <laughs> reference was. Yeah, I'm trying secret to Secret herbs and spices. Yeah. What's, uh, um, what, what's the most common question you guys get? from customers like what what would be the most like they call you and ask you most of the time um it generally comes down to will this awning suit my car or will okay. it suit my setup that's probably yeah the most common one so what we often go is you know shoot us an image of your vehicle and yeah we can make sure it's going to work for you guys okay and what are the limitations there like what is you looking at the size of the vehicle um yeah what roof it comes is, down to yeah basically where it's mounted. So because our awnings have that low profile, we've got to make sure that it's not going to get in the way of any doors that you open up or anything like that. So, um, but they suit most roof racks with that rubber channel. It's yeah, nice and easy. Okay. So hypothetically, because one of, I think the challenges that we have at Snowies is that's probably one of the biggest questions we get asked as well is, is this going to fit our roof rack? And because we um, are obviously online and we're not manufacturing the roof rack and we, we're not manufacturing the awning as well, it's really hard for us to provide that advice. So if customers sort of, you know, they're like, oh, I don't know about this outbound shield awning and whatever – they can come to you and essentially get that answer straight up. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We're more than happy to help. Yeah, just shoot us an email, phone call, whatever you even drop in, and, yeah, we can help out. Do you also do installation services by chance? No. So we, okay. we used to offer that, but, yeah, not anymore, unfortunately. Okay, because I think we get lots of questions from people as well who are like, oh, I travel around in a horse float um, <laughs> that I've turned into like a mini house and I want to put this awning on. It's like, well, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. You know, how, <laughs> how, how would you do that? So, I, yeah, I wondered if that was something you guys did, but um, – yeah. No, we can always offer advice, but yeah, for yeah, sure. unfortunately the factory is just so busy at the moment. We just yeah, yeah can't um, have someone yeah install. Of course. Me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I haven't had a look at the awning yet. I think we've just got some in like this week, so mm. I'm pretty keen to go and have a have I a haven't bit of seen it physically in person yet, yeah. but I'm pretty excited. Yeah. So what's in the pipeline for Superpeg? 
So at the moment, what we find is necessity is the mother of invention. So what often what we'll do on weekends, go out camping, sit around a campfire and go, what's going to make this better? <laughs> um, more often than not, the R&D team's already with us on those camping trips. Yep. So we scribble some notes Monday and, you know, we I give them crazy ideas and I go, all right, build this for me. And, yeah, you know, next camping trip we'll trial it and go from there. But, yeah, at the moment we're looking at um, different versions of freestanding awnings. Okay. Um, yeah, we we really love the Shield Six, so yeah, we just want to expand that range and give people more options. Um, yeah, for what it's going to see. For sure, that sounds pretty exciting. Awesome. I think we've hammered Isaac with loads a lot of questions. Of questions. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited to see the new stuff we've got coming in, and uh, whatever we don't have on the snowy site, obviously you can see on the on the Super Peak site all the warnings and things are on there, and you've got a bunch of videos and stuff too on uh, set up yeah. for a lot of things. And I yeah. did see that video you're talking about with the polypro peg smashing it into the um yeah, into the, the yeah. um, plywood so yeah um some useful videos on there awesome. have you got any more questions no i'm all out done. all done yeah. <laughs> awesome. but only if anybody else has questions they can chuck them on our facebook group or our youtube comments and we can uh post them through to isaac and obviously super peg are pretty approachable by the sounds of things i know yeah. like some brands don't necessarily have that face to face customer option but super peg do yep. so if anybody out there's got questions give them a buzz send yeah. them an email sport sport aussie made for sure yeah. oh, awesome hey, that was great isaac thanks for your time um, thanks for having me on guys that was awesome yeah and hopefully our listeners get a lot out of it too wicked cool all right another episode done and dusted so jump on the facebook group if you have any questions for isaac we'll fire him his way mm-hmm. and um, if we can't answer him anyway keep an eye on the Snowy's uh, website for all the new Superpeak products coming in if we don't have it there check out the Superpeak site but, uh, and as always if you haven't done so already please subscribe via YouTube or your Facebook uh, not your Facebook your favourite podcast <laughs> app awesome we'll <laughs> and, see you guys uh, next week yeah we'll see you next time okay. catch you later <laughs> <See ya. laughs>